Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 46 of Breaking the Fourth Wall. Are you sure? That's, yeah, it's a positive, it is 46. Last week was 45. This, as always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joining me. We have 43 notifications. Junior Ruiz, who's suffering from quietness and a hangover from his birthday celebrations last night. Oh, Say hi to the people, Junior. God, man. What a night. <laughs> what a night. <sighs> So yeah, I apologize in advance if I sound uh, not as uh, enthusiastic. Don't get me wrong, I am, but uh, that's sorry. Right. I'll, I'll I'll bring the enthusiasm. It's just you know I'm fucking. We're sitting here, dude. And I still got my sunglasses. I can't even take my glasses off because my eyes hurt. It's funny you should see it. He looks like what? Like uh, I, I don't know. Just looking at you makes me think of uh, you know that uh, song from the '80s. I wear my sunglasses at night. <laughs> Except, you know, it's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I took them off, like, briefly before we started, like, fucking bright, And you were man. blinded by yeah. the night. Yeah, I'm a, I, I can do bright. this all day. I can do it all day. But I'm not, so <laughs> let's you. let's get into it. First of all, before we do, well, hold on, before we get into it, I do want to, uh, I want to thank everybody who has waited and stuck with us and they watched last week's episode. You know, I got a couple people who were telling me that they watched it and they were very excited that we finally came back and got off our lazy asses to start again. That's good, yeah. So. The support's always excellent. All right. Well, so thank you to those. Thanks, peeps. Let's roll. Let's do it. Um, what we got to be. Right off of uh, pretty much what we talked about last week with the cover controversy and the Milo Minara variant, and we've got more controversy in that arena. Frank Cho, sketch cover, Spider-Gwen. Mm-hmm. People are pissed off. I'm not going to bring up the specific website because I think they're... No free plugs. They're just... They're douches. Um, you know, I, I can understand it's, it's standing for causes and equality, but there is a point where you cross the line mm-hmm. and you've just gone into idiocy. Is it BC? No. Okay. No, I'm totally... I refuse to speak the name of this website on our show because okay. I will not give them any type of promotion at all. F them in the A. All right. But anyway, so the writer, artist, I'm not sure... Who he is. One of the creators. One of the creators of Spider-Gwen. One of the... Screw that. He's not even the creator. Because I don't think he created the character. I think he just works on the book. Well, what's his name? I, I don't know what his name is. How are you going to talk to the... How are we going to bring this up and talk to the people and we don't know the guy's name? Really? Well, I could find out the guy's name, but I didn't really feel like his name was important. Because I don't want to plug him either, because I think he's kind of an a-hole. Just that he works on Spider-Gwen. And, you know, he got all attacky on a lot of the quote-unquote cheesecake artists in the industry. J. Scott Campbell, you know, Frank Cho. Mm -hmm. Um, He basically, you know, alluded to violence towards towards Cho for the Spider-Gwen cover, saying that uh, she was like one of his kids. Uh, It's just, you know, it's ridiculous. Uh, There we go. Oh, did you see the Frank Cho uh, Harley Quinn one? I did. I did. He did that, and then in, res- in response, he did the Harley Quinn one, yeah. which is even more tongue in cheek yeah, than the Spider Gwen. Uh, how long do I have to hold this pose, Mr. J? And he says, until the internet explodes, dear. Here, I actually have the. Uh... Robbie Rodriguez. This ain't the website, is it? No, it's, that's funny. I pulled up the same one. Nice. Book, but that's not it. No, it's not. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, read this verbatim here. It says, the nerd community is a vocal and critical bunch. Now add sensitive people to the mix and you get nerds shouting from all kinds of directions. Right now, we have Frank Cho in the spotlight for his recent parody of the Milo Manera Spider-Woman cover. It all started when he released his Spider-Gwen art that parodies Manera's Spider-Woman cover. Let's just say that a few sites and people weren't too pleased about it, uh, especially the Mary Sue. Um, here's what Sam Maggs from the site had to say in the article titled, Just Because You Can Doesn't Mean You Should. Here's the thing. Yes, Cho has always drawn some cheesecake stuff, and there will always be a place for that in comics. It's why we don't write daily articles about stuff like this and this and this. Whatever that means. It's usually this and that. Right. But Get an editor, Mary Sue. But by taking a shot at this particular cover, one that caused so much discomfort among lots of comic book readers, it shows a clear disregard for the perfectly valid outrage over Monera's original Spider-Woman variant, an incident that, we should note, made our list of the worst moments in female fandom in 2014. Aside from being an obvious poke at those angry feminists who overreact to things, the cover is also an unfortunate but ele- ele- um, I can't I'm, I'm going to blame this on the alcohol because I can't pronounce this word. 
El- elucidating? No. That's there's what a I'm D saying. In, there's a D in there I didn't pronounce. Dating. Elucidating look at what some men think about women who are trying to carve out a space for themselves in the frequently monogamous world of comics, where they feel objectified and overly sexualized on a regular basis. It was misogynist. Blame it on the alcohol. Blame it on the alcohol. Hey, totally. What make, our mother. What makes this sketch even more inappropriate is that the Spider-Gwen book is clearly aimed at a teen audience, meant to entice new, younger female readers to Marvel Comics. Plus, Gwen herself is a teenager. End quote. So, instead of replying to all the different bloggers out there in regards to the scandal, quote-unquote, Cho has instead drawn another parody art featuring Harley Quinn and the Joker of, on his blog. Uh, this art is simple response that saves him time while also getting the message across. Wow, what a crazy couple of days it has been. My parody cover sketch of Spider-Gwen aping the infamous Monero Spider-Woman pose sent out some his hypersensitive people in a tizzy. To be honest, I was amused and surprised by the uproar since it was, in my opinion, over nothing. It's essentially a small group of angry and humorless people ranting against my drawing of a pretty woman. It's utter nonsense. This world would be a better and happier place if some people just grow a sense of humor and relax. Now, I'm getting bombarded by various bloggers asking for an interview addressing this scandal. Instead of my, me wasting my breath and the precious time over this non-issue replying to all the interviewers, I've drawn another cover sketch in response to which will hopefully answer all the questions. Enjoy, everyone. And it is the Harley Quinn Valentine Day special blank cover. It's got the Harley bent over in the pose with her G-string hanging out, and it's got Joker on the side. And she says, oh, this pose is so last year. How long do I have to hold this pose, Mr. J? And he says, until the internet explodes, dear. Do you think people are making a big deal out of this, or do you think Cho is, the, is, is in the wrong for creating art that is poking fun at sensitive people? And that's everything the article said. Um, and if I had to go on record and answer that last question, in the history of pop culture, so what, you're thinking maybe mid-70s? No, go back to the 60s, because right. when Marvel really exploded, because before Marvel exploded, DC was on its own, so right. there was really nothing to parody. Mm-hmm. But when you figure when competition starts coming, and this isn't anything, not just pop culture, but sports, everything, everybody parodies, every, parodies everything. Right. What did we just watch before we went to uh, to record? Watch those promos. Right. Parody. Right. Everybody parodies. Right. Whether in some form or fashion. And what does they say? Um, what, uh, copying somebody is the sincerest form of flattery. Irritation. Yeah. So, like, like you were right when you said earlier, what is the big deal? It's a sketch cover that he drew. It's right. not something that if he drew to be released and sold. Maybe he might make a print or two off of it and sell mm-hmm. it at a con, but officially yeah, it, being it sold won't be mass produced as like a comic cover or whatever. No way. Like, so what are you getting all in a tizzy for? And then it's, and it's not nearly as sexual as the Monero variant was. Not at all. If anything, the Harley was more sexual. And as a matter yeah. of fact, this one. is the other problem that I really have with this. Is when that Monero variant came out, you couldn't even see her ass. Right. It was covered. So people really are bitching about, like, the untouched artwork, which no one really saw except on the internet. Right. And then, I I hate to call... You know, I'm all for equal rights for everybody, and women don't necessarily get a fair shake in comics, but... You've obviously never been to a convention either. To say... Well, no. (laughs) And I, I... I'm saying, like, as far as the representation of women in comics. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. I'm not talking about the fans. I'm talking the representation of. It's understandable, but you got to just just calm down. It's too much. I agree. And for things like this to get all just out of hand, like, really, Cho said it, people need to get a sense of humor. Yeah, totally. And then for uh, Robbie Rodriguez, is that what I said his name was? Yeah. For him to come out and basically do a violent rant at Cho and Cannonball and Beefcake Artists and saying that they're the cause that the industry hasn't reached the heights that it could is just, it's it's unfair. Because, like he said, this is there's enough playing fields for everyone to be there. Mm-hmm. There's enough playing field for comics for us for comics for kids, for comics for new readers. Now here, let me interrupt you. Here's the, um, it says, as did artist and co-creator Robbie Rodriguez. He's the artist and co-creator of Spider-Man. Right. So this is um, what he tweeted out. It says, here's my take on the Frank Cho sketch cover. You're drawing dirty pics of one of my kids. Be lucky you're, you're, you're never around me. Hashtag Spider-Gwen. 
So he's looking at it where he based Spider Gwen, I guess, off his daughter in terms of, uh, you know, like using her for a reference. Not not the the cover itself, but just the character, like when he draws it. I'm sorry, right. like or maybe her personality. I think as a creator, he's saying it's one of his creations, so it's like one of his kids. I don't think he's making a rough reference to his actual child. I think it's more of as a creator, he feels like he's the father, which honestly you're not. Because Gwen Stacy was wrong way before Spider Gwen was ever created, and Flash to the Pan, dude, this character probably won't even really be around in ten years. Hmm. He gets just out of line with it, and you can't respect that. You know the the attitude that you put when you want acceptance and you want to be open, you want new people to 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 come in to the art form and the hobby that you love. Inciting violence and anger against a creator that's one of the best artists in the industry is no way to do it. No, I agree. That's not how you create acceptance. That's how you create issues, and we have enough issues. Because look, now my the, the, the Batgirl cover gets pulled because of shit like this. Calm down, get a sense of humor, get a little friggin' perspective. Totally. Uh, and I have to give major props to Rob Lightfield, which is hilarious because I think I shit-talked him last issue. Our last episode, I'm not really a fan of Lightfield's work. I am a fan of the fact that on his Facebook, he took to defending these guys and Cheesecake. And it was it was nice to see guys come out. Uh, Campbell responded on the feed. Mm-hmm. So did Jason Fabak. Okay. It was nice to see people actually getting involved that work in comics to talk about and be like, yeah, this is too far. I mean, I was talking to my wife about this, my better half. And she didn't really agree with the opinion I'm going to lay on you. And my opinion is, is this not the same thing that they do in these superhero movies when Chris Helmsworth has his shirt off and he's all muscly? And f- Is this not the same thing? Are they not over-sexualizing these characters cinematically? And, I mean, in movies. I mean, in the comic books, even. You're wearing tight spandex suits and they're all muscly. I mean, it's... No, I agree. It's fantasy, man. I agree. That's uh, the beefcake. And this whole idea of, like, these new fans that I don't really think truly exist, I don't. If like, they, they keep the talking about, all oh, these new fans, these new fans, I don't believe it. I think the new fans are the ones that watch the movies and the shows. They don't go and actually visit a comic book Yeah, show. no, they're not. They might buy a t-shirt, you know. <laughs> like the guy at the gas station. Yeah, they might buy a t-shirt, but they don't know. They're not reading the comic. Yeah. You know, it's just a bunch of crap, and, and it kind of it kind of pisses me off a little bit. You know, as a fan, especially with this this Frank Cho stuff, the only reason I even brought it up is because these two covers that he's drawn, Spider Gwen and Harley Quinn, not even out on stands. They are just blank sketch covers that he did <coughs> sketches on and posted on his blog and on Twitter. So what the hell is the issue? Right. If you don't like it, don't look at it. Don't buy it. Change the channel. Don't listen. You You know, it's America, people. I believe we're still free to do what we want. Until that changes, which if this kind of crap keeps up and people don't stand up for what they believe in and they back down from these tyrannical nut jobs that believe like everything has to be in safety little glass and everything's got to be perfect so no one's feelings get hurt. <laughs> you know, it's just wrong. This is That's the reason why the comic book industry has been held down because people look at it shitty and then the people that do, that are involved in it, a quarter of them are crazy nut jobs that opinions are just so out of whack with any kind of normal, rational thinking that people are like, oh, those crazy comic book fans that live in their mom and dad's basement, you know? Yeah. That's the problem. Yet, over in Japan, comics are a billion-dollar-a-year industry, and you've got everything from kitty comics to friggin' porn and everything in between. Yeah. And here you can buy underwear at a vending machine. Yeah, it's these dirty underwear in a vending machine in Japan. There's way more forward thinking than I need to be, but I appreciate the fact that, hey, right, they, right. they're freaks and they let that flag fly. And they're not like, you know, it's not like if someone, did, if there's a Japanese person that's like, oh, that disgusts me, then they don't buy it. Right. They don't get on the mirror soon. My feelings are hurt and I'm being repressed. Just bullshit. All right. Moving on. Now that now that I'm done with that. I'm done. Good. I'm, I, that has been the demon. The demon has been exercised. You know, it's funny you say that, dude. The other day, because I listen to podcasts, go figure, while I'm at work, right? Mm-hmm. I'm driving and stuff. And uh, I was listening to Stone Cold's uh, podcast over on podcast1.com, which one, one day we should be on. Stone Cold Steve but, uh, Austin. He was doing a, uh, the uh, he did a two-parter with Bruce Pritchard 
I know you remember Bruce Richard, a.k.a. Brother Love. Oh, yes. I love yes. you. And he was going, he was cutting promos on Steve on the podcast in the Brother Love character. Dude, I was dying. And Steve's just sitting there laughing the whole time. I'll listen laughing. to that. Steve Austin, man, that guy does a great podcast. That guy is just... I, I listened so to uh, the Gabriel Iglesias one. Oh, I was crying. Hilarious, dude. Hilarious. Like, Stone Cold has a funny side to him. Like, legit funny side. Like, it's him and just fluffier. They're going back and forth, man. Oh, he had, really, he had a Gabriel Iglesias yeah. on his show. Yeah, he was at his house. They talked about it. He's like, dude, he's like, I saw you pulling up, and I seen a fucking Prius pull up in my driveway. I said, this motherfucker is not driving a damn Prius. And then I seen it drive away, and then the fucking 300 rolled up with the gold fucking Ferrari doors, and your ass came out. And I seen, and then the Prius came back, and it's more guys, and it's like, motherfucking 15 motherfuckers here, and I'm thinking, you guys selling drugs? You guys got some dope on you? <laughs> And he was like, hey, I'm going to drink with Stone Cold Steve Austin and ask you what you fucking want. And you want Jack Daniels. I got you a couple bottles of Jack Daniels. So they're sitting there. They're all in the same room. You hear the entourage in the background and shit. And they're taking shots and just, the dude is just That's awesome. awesome. He should do, he should video podcast that, man. Austin, yeah. Because it would be gold. Oh, yeah. But uh, back to the realm of comic books is what we do here at the Spin Rack. Breaking the fourth wall presented by Comics Remix. Secret Wars coming up. It's the big plug machine, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Hey, man, it's our show. we got to plug ourselves, right? Secret Wars coming up for Marvel. It's their big event this summer. Uh, I mentioned we were going to talk about it in last week's episode. Yeah. Um, I think I, I'm not sure if we touched on it at all. I, I know I've said that this is this is uh, coming out of events, spinning out of Marvel Now's Avengers and uh, New Avengers, I believe. The Jonathan Hickman stuff. The Jonathan Hickman run, yeah. Which um, is, fuck it. in my opinion, I'm sorry, it's been shit. I, really, I've tried to I've tried to read it, and I I've discussed this I think on a past uh, spinner rack, if not on uh, comics remix itself, where I was not a fan of somebody forcing me to pay four ninety nine an issue almost every other month for an additional like three or four pages of just white page. You yeah, did, we did talk about this, and it's just like a blank paper with the title, yeah. a blank page with the title. Because you want to make it look like this big cinematic thing. If I want big cinematic, I'll go watch the movie. Right. I want my comic. Yeah, totally. I want to read a comic. I don't buy a comic specifically to just look at the artwork. I buy it to read as well. I need both. It's 50-50. I hate the books that come out and they're like 90% artwork, 10% dialogue. That don't tell me shit because I'm done with the issue in seconds. Well, that's great. So both of us are, are coming straight into the Street Wars with negative opinions of it leading up. I was, I read, as you know, Marvel Now got me back into Marvel because I wasn't really reading anything Marvel outside of Superior Spider-Man and Ultimate stuff at yeah. the time. I tried to read these books. I was out within four or five issues. I was just done. Yeah. And I've had no interest in going back into them whatsoever. But anyway, Secret Wars is coming up. Marvel's big event. Not really interested. I will read it. Yeah. It's more, you know what I've noticed with these big events? It's not the event itself. It's the con like the fallout of it that's what everybody's looking for right you know i mean i will admit now how they're how they're doing this where it's not really an event it's like all these worlds coming together so all these worlds are technically ending and or these universes you know and they're all going to break and become you know every portion of a different universe or a different world or a timeline or whatever is going to be make up this battle world. So I think that's actually pretty damn interesting. the concept itself is pretty okay the concepts of battle world may be interesting but it was also done a few years ago, five, six, maybe longer, by DC. Countdown Arena. Was that that was? Yeah, well, basically... Like, did anybody read that crap besides you? I'm sure people did. Okay. I mean, Convergence is honestly almost the same thing. Yeah. But when don't they copy each other? No, yeah, that's, that's the truth. But it's just weird that the two big events for this summer, Convergence and Secret Wars, almost the same thing, but not really. I mean, I think Secret War is really going to be more about what Hickman's been doing with the worlds coming to an end and universes crashing into each other and stuff. Whereas the tie-ins, the, the Battle World stuff's just going to be, like I said, like a Countdown Arena, almost more sounding like Convergence to me. I know they're revisiting a lot of old storylines. <clears throat> um, a lot of stuff you've read in the past is making a comeback. I think it's a way... To bring back care and it's smart, you know, I guess in a way to bring back characters that they wrote off just for the sake of shock value, aka Wolverine. 
No, um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I do like certain. How they're doing the um, the 90s X-Men have their own little thing. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty dope. No, that is cool. And the uh, Old Man Logan. Yeah. Which is something I would love, love to see Old Man Logan revisited. That was one of my favorite Wolverine stories of all time. But, you know, they're... There's not really much. I really can't formulate an opinion on Secret Wars, so I'm not going to bash it too hard because I haven't read anything yet. Um, there's some interesting stuff coming out of it. Um, last week when we recorded, there was rumors flying around that the X-Men might have their own shared universe post-Secret War. And there's a lot of speculation and thought put out that once Secret Wars were over, that, Wol- that Wolverine, that the X-Men weren't going to be part of the DC or the Marvel Universe. Guy, I can't believe I said DC. Why don't you? I don't know. My brain's firing on mis- misfiring on all cylinders. Is this smart <laughs> to drink at, with a hangover? Yeah, it usually helps a little bit. All right, but uh, we'll find out. People were were speculating that oh, are, is the X Men going to have their own universe and be separate from the main Marvel universe? Uh, Alonzo came out and said that that's not going to happen. Right. I think people were worried that Marvel was going to do what they've done with. Fantastic Four and try and distance themselves from them. Yeah. Since they don't own the rights to the, to the movies. But, no worries. It's not going to happen. Uh, more stuff that's coming out of Secret Wars is obviously the Ultimate Universe is coming to an end. But you know what? The way it's been, it, it should happen a long time ago. Uh, it's been... There's been some gems. Lately, it's lately. been pretty rough. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Lately. Miles Morales has been the strongest point. Yeah. He's going to be in the 616 when this is all over. Yeah. But you got to wonder how they're going to factor him in. Because you know he's not going to be a, you know, Spider-Man. Oh, no. He's going to be Spider-Man. Really? In the 616? Yeah. So you're going to have more than one Spider-Man. Yeah, you're going to have more than one Spider-Man. That's weird. I mean, we'll see. Who knows? They could pull what what it looks like DC's going to be doing at the end of Convergence. When Convergence finishes, the new 52 is now over. Well, it's officially over because from now, for the next six weeks... It's all convergence from DC. Yeah. They'll be getting no other titles. I mean, I'm, I'm sure their vertical books will come out. Yeah. But there's no other main, main DC universe line, yeah. outside of convergence. Then when convergence ends, um, the 20 or so new 52 titles that survive will come out, and then there'll be 20 something plus new titles. But they're going to be all over the place. Right. <clears throat> so there's an all new, all different Avengers coming out it'll be a free comic book day i saw that cover i remember we yeah. posted it the all white cover with the where it had the member like they're revealing it little by little and had the members yeah, like yeah. shadowed out like their outlines yep yeah so so i've got a list for you that team sucks i'll tell you now it's gonna be miles morales it's gonna be she thor or as i've taken to call on her sure sure nova vision miss marvel the kamala khan yeah miss marvel sam wilson captain america Iron Man, there's speculation that it may not be Tony Stark. Okay. Uh, that comes out for comic book day. Doesn't that sound like Force Works or West Coast Avengers? It, yeah, it's got kind of a West Coast Avengers feel to you it. You know? It's not anything I feel like I'm interested in reading. Um, that Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, dude, why well, respect what book. they're doing there. I like that It's one. not for me, but that's I could totally see how they could get younger readers in, especially girls. Right. It's... For what they're well, trying to do it for, it's good for me. I'm an old man, not so much. Here's my thing, though. The Avengers are Marvel's A-list team. They're the freaking Justice League. Mm-hmm. Why are you going to put C, D, and maybe like B-minus players on there? Because at some point you have to do something all new and all different. Uh, apparently. Because what, what's one, uh, one A-lister on that team? 100% positive A-lister. None. Yeah, none, because Iron Man's kind of like... We don't know if that's Tony. Tony. Or not. Right, exactly. You know, and that's Iron Man. But even that, Iron Man before the movie was a B-lister. And you know what I just noticed about Iron Man looking at that Marvel poster over there? He's got nipples. That's awesome. So 70s Iron Man had nipples. Fucking Schumacher. Yeah, got, right. He got to him first. Right, Schumacher. So, other news in the post... Secret Wars I think world. I asked last week when we were talking about conversions. What do you think they're going to do with Harley? Uh, I'm positive I asked. I don't know. Let me let me get through this last little piece of Secret Wars, then we're moving on to a little bit of conversions. All right, let's do it. Johnny Storm oh. is joining the Inhumans in the Uncanny Inhumans. 
the only people, the only reason anyone's going to read this book is because it's going to be free. Free comic book day. Yeah, first issue's free. Um, this is obviously what they're going to do with Fantastic Four now until... Well, speaking of free comic book day, by the way, are you going to a shop? No. 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 Probably. I got to work that morning. I'm not sure I really care about free comic book day anymore. I got to tell you this now. I'm assuming you're probably going to have that vehicle by then. Yeah. You're going to watch Age of Ultron with us. Okay. I don't want to hear no bullshit. No, I'm totally down with that. I'm Age just, of Ultron, I'm done. I'm just I'm telling you. So, anyways. Anyway, Giant Storm, Inhumans. Obviously, they're going to part off the Fantastic Four to a bunch of different teams post-Secret War because Marvel's taking a stand against... Anything Fox-related. Anything Fox-related, yeah. So... You know, Fox, speaking of Fox-related, I know we'll probably get into it later, but I just want to throw it out there that I think it's hilarious... 13 episodes, mm-hmm. you know, with the Daredevil series on right. Netflix. Marvel's just giving a big middle finger to Fox. I'm like, this is how you do it. Yeah, totally. You know? It's a dead show. We're going to get to that. Um, <laughs> you know, this and I don't... Their push for the Inhumans to replace the, the, the mutants, X-Men. it's not going to work. The Inhumans aren't nearly as interesting as the mutants are. Um, I think the only thing they can hope for is that those movies bomb. And they'll eventually will maybe just sign a deal. The way Spider Man. The way Spider Man did with Sony, which was a good move on Sony because. Yeah, but I mean, I should have did it sooner. I guess Johnny Storm makes a little bit of sense in the Inhumans. He was married to one Crystal, of them, uh, Crystal, right? No, Crystal was Quicksilver's. Are you he, sure? No, he did date her. Oh, he dated her. Yeah, he dated her, but Quicksilver uh, knocked her up. And then the Inhumans have been tied to the Fantastic Four a little bit, but whatever. I mean, go read it. No, they're not. Those are two t- titles that a year or two from now they won't exist. You know, looking at those Spider-Man movies, how uh, Sony kept them and they did five movies, and then mm-hmm. they tried and they tried, and they're just like, all right, we're just going to give it back to you. That's how I, uh, I compared it to the Batman movies. If you think about it, you yeah, know? totally. Because they, you know, I compare Batman and Batman Returns to the same Raimi stuff. For uh, Spider-Man. Right. And then the Schumacher stuff to Amazing Spider-Man. Not in terms of quality, but just if you had to match it. You know what I mean? Right, right. And then they finally, you know, DC decides we're going to redo it, and they give us the Nolan trilogy, which is all types of badass. So just kind of think about it that way when it comes to Spider-Man. True, true. And then, uh, so Convergence. Okay, I finally read Convergence. I know a little bit more on it. Um, I got to start. It kind of spun out of Future's End. A little bit. Okay. Uh, a little bit from the end of Earth 2. Okay. The world's end or the regular Earth The two? world's end. Okay. Well, Earth 2 and world's end kind of congruently ran together when they would come out. Okay. Um, you know, basically, Brainiac has been capturing cities throughout different time periods, different universes in the multiverse. Yeah. And he's disappeared. Brainiac. Brainiac. So now you have all these different versions of Brainiac that aren't the lead Brainiac, quote unquote, the lead Brainiac, that have now formed together into this, uh, I I can't remember what he called himself, but they've all formed together into one being that's now decided that uh, they, he is going to have release all the heroes from all these cities and make them battle each other and whoever wins gets to survive. Okay. And then, you know, it started with Superman and, like, the, uh, I believe it's the new 52 Superman and he's kind of there and I'm not even sure how that happened because I don't read Superman but I do read action. So I don't know if it happened in Superman's main book that they explain how he ends up in the Convergent thing. I'll tell you this much, not really, my opinion's not high in Convergence. Really? Uh, and I was at one of those books where, like, because DC is um, a habit of doing these big event things like this with, like, 15 different writers, you know? Is it one of those books, or do they have, like, one writer? No, it's one writers? writer. It's okay. only going to be eight issues. Okay. Um, I think part of the problem is is they are kind of doing, like, the Secret Wars thing is where you're getting them revisiting a lot of old titles. So there's, much like Flashpoint, there's a bunch of two-part miniseries. Best that are old titles coming back, but they're not like okay. Like to be honest, I sat down and tried to read all these, and 
The only one I made it through was Batman and Robin, and it left such a bad taste in my mouth that I couldn't, when I tried to read any of the rest of them, like, it just, the amount of suck that existed there, I couldn't finish any of them. Like, first of all, the Batman and Robin problem is, is that it's pre-Flashpoint Gotham City, right? Okay. So, if it's Batman and Robin, pre-Flashpoint, that should be Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne. Correct. It wasn't. Okay. It was Bruce Wayne and Damian. Hmm. And at first, Bruce was in the Dick Grayson pre-New 52 Batman costume, which we know Bruce Wayne did not wear. Correct. Then, it switched to a more New 52 looking costume, which is kind of how Batman's costume looked pre-New 52, but it had the yellow oval and a lot more like speed lines, I guess is what I'll call them. Okay. So it was that costume, but it didn't have the yellow oval. So it's more just kind of like laziness in the editing department. So it's total laziness in the editing department. They haven't written in the writer said, this is who you're writing, this is what it should look like. So a book that I was looking forward to, because I was an enormous fan of Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin, D&D, best v in my opinion. Okay. For people that don't know Dick Grace, Dick and Damien, Dick Grace and Damien yeah. Wayne, best Batman and Robin, hands down. I mean, it took the Batman and Robin dynamic, flipped it on its head, you got the pissed off brooding Robin. You've got a more light and funny, sarcastic, witty Batman. It was a nice change. Mm-hmm. And I was really hoping for them to revisit that, and that's not what they gave us. They gave us New 52 Batman and Robin in the pre New 52 world. And then everything else that sucked. The Harley Quinn book, fucking unreadable. Wow. It was it was horrible. The the, the regular team? Uh yeah, I, I believe so. Wow. It was just like, because again, it's pre New 52 Harley Quinn, but it just didn't. Right. <laughs> it was just way too much, just like. If you're trying to push a story and you're trying to use these tie ins to push a story, then push the story. Yeah. Don't do bullshit nonsense for a whole issue that's not really going to matter. Because that's pretty much what I got out of the, I don't know, 10, ten books that I looked at okay. outside of the main convergence. Hmm. So if I had to give of the comics remixed four star rating system, right now I ain't giving any of them tie-in shit. Wow. They don't even get half a star. A quarter. I'll give convergence one and a half at this point. Nah, you know, that's I'm being a little too gracious. Let's back it down to a one. <laughs> it's an interesting concept, but they've done it before. Mm-hmm. So, with that it's, said... It's always been, you know what, and there's probably some listeners who are going to disagree with me, and it's absolutely fine. But I feel Marvel is the king of time travel stories and alternate universes and all that stuff. Man, aside, I don't think so. Aside from Kingdom Come. What about... DC's got some good Elseworlds tales. Vampire Batman is awesome. Red Sun is awesome. That was good, yes, yes, yes. You know, there are... There's a few, but I mean, when you really sit and you, like, you rank them, I think Marvel... Got a lot more success out of that. I think it's a give and take, man. Yeah. That's a give and take. Because there are some Marvel tales that I almost call them Elseworlds. There are some time, you know, multiverse Marvel tales that are good. Yeah, like, yeah. I like Imperfect Hulk was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, most of the Age of Apocalypse stuff was okay. I was just going to say Age of Apocalypse. Old Man stuff, Logan, man. awesome. So I really think it's give or take, you know. Uh, so like I was about to say, when does event fatigue set in? It doesn't. Apparently. When do we just get tired of this? Well, I've been tired of it, but I don't think, maybe because you got every year you have new fresh readers come, you know, what are these new fans coming in? And, uh, you know, so it's every year is somebody's first event. You know, and one uh, publisher told me one day, I says, why did do companies constantly do relaunches and all that stuff because retailers order more when they issue as a number one with the chance of getting new readers to come in their store and oh I can start from here I don't have to worry about all those other issues that came before so that's the constant relaunch yeah that's just that's just irritating to me because in my opinion half of these events just suck Mm -hmm. like in the last decade out of the 20 events because we know each company does almost two a year yeah well, it used to be one. Uh, well, okay. Well, they do at least one a year. Yeah. Sometimes two. 
sometimes you have events happening you in different You have a mini groups. event that yeah. leads to a bigger event. How many of them have been good? How many of them have been memorable? Last 10 years? When did Civil War come out? 2008, 7? No, really? That late? 2005-ish, I want to say. Yeah, probably. If anything, in my that probably had the long, the longest lasting repercussions. Oh yeah, I, when you I'm sit not... and you look at the bigger picture of it, like it led to this, which led to that, which led to this, which led right, to that. Right, right. You know, but so much of it, like I hated Civil War. What? But I didn't hate Civil War because it was bad writing. I hated Civil War because it made me hate Iron Man. <laughs> and at the time, Iron, Iron Man was Wolves. probably one of my favorite. Marvel characters, and now I just think he's a shit. And it made Captain America look like an idiot. It made him look like a, a, a thug that didn't take time to think about the repercussions of what he was doing. So it, it sullied some of their characters. Okay. But it wasn't a horrible event. It wasn't House of M. God. I mean, House of M in it itself wasn't, Age of Ultron. wasn't horrible. But the tie-ins... Yeah. The, the, and even the tie-ins on... On House of M, some of them were good, but they just didn't tie in well to the, the main Spider-Man story. Spider-Man one was good. The Spider-Man one was good. The Fantastic Four one was great. Had it actually, the implications of it played into the main event properly, which they did not. Right. An Age of Ultron, humongous piece of crap. Oh, God, yeah. Big turd burger. Just huge. Infinity. More crap. Oh, I forgot about that. It just crap. I was, yeah, that was horrible. So now, not to sound like we're just DC friendly over here, Final Crisis, humongous piece of shit. Yes. Countdown sucked. Yes. 52 wasn't so bad. No, not at all. It was a good year of comics. Yeah. Infinite Crisis. That was good. Excellent. Identity Crisis. Excellent. Yes. No, we're just sitting here. We're, we're just said not to shit all over Marvel. Right. I mean, we're sitting here naming all the DC stuff that was just good. Well, no, I said House of Dawn wasn't terrible. Yeah. The tie-ins. Secret Invasion wasn't bad. Uh, it was so-so. Secret all Invasion they did just was felt put, forced. Was put Norman Osborn in charge. Like, I feel like... Which was good because they gave us that badass run of Thunderbolts. I guess. I feel like that's what the events do now. The events aren't really to tell a badass story. It's just the lead into something else. It's Yeah, it's more or less just the device... To bring about whatever they want to do. Instead of just, man, let's tell this awesome story. Oh, this is the device we're going to use to bring about this. Flashpoint. Great story. Yeah. But was really ultimately just a device to bring on the new 52. Very true. Which was a boatload of suck. New 52? Yeah. You don't like any of it? For the most part, the new 52 has been a wash. It's got some memorable moments. Superman, I thought, was fine before new 52. He sucks now. Yeah. Wonder Woman sucked before New 52. I think she's awesome now. Batman, dude, I don't know what the hell happened to Scott Snyder, but before New 52, Scott Snyder was killing it. Yeah. I don't feel like that way now. I Court of like, Owls was good. I think uh, after Court of Owls, it's when it, the quality, in my opinion. I mean, this I hated that thing, Joker style. This Endgame thing is just kind of like... The, the Joker shit. Yeah. Not Endgame, but um, Death of the Family. Yeah, Death of the Family sucked. It had a good lead up. But the, the, the thing they couldn't was, catch me was... The Joker, his vocalization, like, it just felt like he wasn't Joker. You know what I mean? Like, he was just writing them different, and that's totally cool, because every writer puts their own spin on it. But it just didn't feel like I was reading the Joker. But, uh, I stuck along with it, but, yeah, the ending pissed me off. Like, it just, it was so flat. You know, and ever since then, I've noticed that's, you know, the quality of it started to really slip. Yeah, I'm really hoping, like, for some... Freshness to come to Batman when it leaves when you know, it, when convergence is over. Demon Knights was pretty damn good, dude. Demon, that, see that's the thing is that's where DC did good with New Fifty Two, and they didn't necessarily need to do the New Fifty Two for some of the successes that they had, which ultimately ended up as cancel cancellations anyway. Yeah, Animal Man was really good, yes. solid solid run. Swamp Thing solid run. When Steiner left that book, I was worried there were a couple issues. Where I was like, uh, and this, there's a Facebook page that, um, uh, it's like comic book fans, they just talk comic books. And I remember I got really bashy on the new writer, and this guy that Charles was a friend Soleil. of him, yeah, this guy that was a friend of Soleil came to his defense. And he was like, man, that's my boy, you know, it's not really cool. And, like, that you're just, and I'm like, no, you don't understand, man. When you have such a high mark, and then someone comes in and they underperform, like, I think you need, as a writer, you need someone to talk shit to you when your shit's poor 
That's not even just writing. It's any, any anything yeah. in, in any kind of art form or, or movies, TV, music. You need people to let you know when you suck. Oh yeah. Because how are you supposed to step up your game if you don't know you're sucking? Yeah. Now I feel like that he totally stepped up his game because from there on out, like a couple issues, uh, but then Swamp Thing has been like, like good. He find the comfort zone. Yeah, once he hit, he hit a, a good stride and kept it going. Justice League International was a good. Book Justice League like. International was good. Cut short. Yeah. Justice League Dark was good at first, and then it fell and off. then it, and it fell off. Uh, Constantine, blah. Um, Captain Adam. I feel like I'm one of the only people. It was okay. That was like that was an excellent take on Captain Adam. Oh uh, yeah. Like it was different. It was his best take on him. It was more like an it existential was, it wasn't look a great at him. Book, but when you look at what's been out before with him, it was yeah. really good. And I think the problem where DC dropped the ball with Captain Adam is you've got one of the head editors of DC saying, well, what the hell do you need a Captain Adam book when you can have the real thing in Dr. Manhattan when yeah. they were doing before Watchmen? Yeah. And I, I wanted to like reach through my computer and fucking choke that guy because you ignorant bastard, Dr. Manhattan is a take on the Adam, yeah. on Captain on Adam. Captain Adam. So how the hell are you going to say well, you don't need Captain Adam when you have the original? What? How do you have a lead <laughs> position at DC when you don't even know the characters, you ignorant bastard. Um, yeah, God, what else was good? Week. Frankenstein. Yeah, that was good. Frankenstein was good. I got into that super late. I think I got. I started reading it after it was canceled. Really? Yeah. I started reading it after like seven or eight issues. People kept saying Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Yeah. Was I even really was egging me on about it. But and Demon Knights. I finally man. ended and I read it and I was like, That's why did good. Demon Knights have to go? That was a great book. But they didn't. You know, there was enough shaking up of things. That some things were good. I mean, like, Flash didn't really need to be touched. Because the Flash was, in my opinion, pretty strong after Rebirth. Yeah. Uh, Green Lantern, nothing really changed for Green Lantern. Not at all. You know, just, just some of the... So they just screwed a lot of things up. Because some of those books need the continuity that they have. Batman needed to follow its continuity. Now, because of it, things have been all messed up and characters have been ruined. Rob, Red Robin sucks. Tim Drake was awesome pre-New 52. See, not going... Dick Grayson to this, sucks. ...to this new universe after or whatever after Convergence is done. What do you do now? Like, are you going to sit there and piece out certain things? Oh, well, this from the new 52 happened. We're going to make that part of the continuity, but this other stuff didn't happen. The same thing they did with pre-52 when new 52 was launched. Do you remember how much of a headache that was? Yeah, totally. Like, I had people coming into the store and asking... It's like, they need to put out, like, a novel when they launched new 52 of what stood and what didn't. Because it was like, well, Superman died, but not what you've read. Yeah. You know, well, Blackest Night happened, but not like how, how you think it. You know what I mean? It was yeah. really confusing. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just, you know, it's a mess. It's comics. Moving on. Peter Parker will be Spider-Man yes, in sir. Civil War. Yes, sir. So any hopes of people to get an ethnic Spider-Man or Miles Morales kind of gone. Hey, did you see that they said they're going to cast him as a 15, 16 year old? The, yeah, they I did say see. That, that, that's what the actor was going to be. The, yeah, the they, character. They said that they're going to cast him as a 15, 16 year old, yeah. They also said that they're not ruling out that he will be white because of where he's from. They don't feel like the character necessarily has to be white, but I did read that the only person that has read for the role so far was, was white. white. Yeah. Well, so, call him Pedro Parker? Yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, more in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Age of Ultron. Looks two awesome. Week, two, two weeks? Looks right. awesome, yeah. yeah two we'll weeks. totally be doing a review of that one. Oh, yeah. That movie, I'm excited, man. They Marvel does good movies, you know. Uh, I wonder when they're going to flop, and I think it's coming. I think Ant-Man might be Marvel's first flop. You think so? I really just, I'm not excited about seeing it. What I tell Guardians was nobody wanted to watch Guardians. And I was then excited people went to, to go Guardians. watch Guardians, and everybody blew their minds. I was excited to see Guardians, but I thought it could suck. I wasn't sure. You see the the image for the yellow jacket? Yeah, and it just not. It, like it does nothing Iron for me. Man. You know, I really think it's it's gonna suck. I think it'll be good. Um, Fantastic Four finally got some Fantastic Four trailers. Yeah. Finally got to look at the thing. Really? Like, see, this is the messed up thing. As much as uh, as in previous uh-huh. episodes. I have talked crap about this new Fantastic Four and not being interested. I saw a trailer and instantly I was like, I'm going to have to go see that. Let me know how it is. And I'm not saying that I'm like, oh my God, it looks awesome. 
I'm intrigued. Right. I will say that the thing looks messed up. Yeah. Like they went with this. Like I don't the know if you remember this. The best thing was the 1994 unreleased movie. Yeah. With the, the, well, no, I agree. That was the best looking thing. We've had this discussion before. There are some times that you can use actual physical special effects, and it looks good. Yeah. I.e. Um, Hulk. <laughs> well, no, Hulk's been CGI. Okay. I'm talking more like uh, Mr. Hyde in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That was mostly a suit. Okay. And it looked good. It didn't look fucked up. It didn't look too... It looked good. I even thought the thing looked okay in the Fantastic Four movies. Eh, looked too short to me. Uh, he was too short. Now we've got what looks like the extra mutated thing from the 80s. He looks more, like, jagged. Hi, Brian. Hi. Finally, <laughs> he takes the sunglasses off. Welcome to the real world. It's, it's like, fucking bright It's like sitting today, here with man. fucking Roddy Roddy Piper and they live. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you know, since you don't want to see that, my last little bit of uh, Marvel news, Daredevil on Netflix. I know you said you haven't got to watch any episode yet. Been out for what this, this past weekend it came out. It's been a, it's well by the time this hits it'll have been up for five days, well, six it's days. Tomorrow. Oh wait, what am I talking about? Yeah, tomorrow. It'll be yeah, just the weekend. Yeah. So when people listen to this, yeah. So when you hear today. this tomorrow, <laughs> it, it just came out Friday. Yeah. So it's um, been out. I know people that have already watched it twice all the way through. No way. Yeah. That good, huh? People are like, I've seen it twice all the way through. It's that great. I was waiting on Melissa. Because she's interested in it. I actually showed her the Daredevil Ben Affleck movie. She didn't hate it. Um, I watched the first two episodes without her. She bitched at me. Then me and her binged watched three episodes last night. Nice. And uh, only three episodes in, dude. And I'm not afraid to say that this is possibly the best superhero show on TV. That's not on TV. Gotcha. Um, As far as Marvel fare, dude, this show smokes Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Of course. Just smokes the shit out of it. Like, if they would have taken the approach to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that they have taken with Daredevil, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would be a better show. Now, what's the approach that they took? Why, why would you say that? It's just that, it's, it's, man, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., when it first came on, I, I didn't get into the characters. I didn't, Like, everyone like likes to assume, okay, let, let me take a step back. The Marvel fanboys, <clears throat> they like to assume that People that don't like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. don't like it because there's no superheroes in it. No, we don't like it because the characterization sucked. You didn't give me anybody to care about. Like, the just... It was like... Care about Sky. You know, Brick Wall. Yeah, why? Because she's hot? Yes. Yeah, see, that's not enough. Chloe Bennett. A pretty girl and some Agent Coulson aren't enough to make a show go. And then the fact that apparently there's going to be a spinoff of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Why? I have no fucking clue. Um, but Daredevil, dude, I wasn't too sure about the casting on Daredevil. I didn't like the way the guy looked at the cast that played Daredevil. Perfect. Foggy Nelson, perfect. Dude, the sh- I'm excited to watch this show. What makes me sad is that all 13 episodes are available to us right now. That means we will binge watch it. By the next time we sit down to record, I will have probably seen all of Daredevil, and I will be lamenting the fact that I have to wait a year. For what? This is the fucking Game of Thrones of comic book shows. For me. I have only three, seen three episodes. I'm going to be sad that Why I have to wait, wait a, year? a year. For what? For season two. There is no season two. Oh, there will be. No. You didn't, well, if there is, they haven't announced it. You didn't hear what they were doing? The, the yeah, plan? no, I know they're doing the Defenders. Yeah. There'll be a season two. You think so? Oh, yeah. Dude, perfect, perfect fucking place to introduce the Punisher. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Like, the Punisher would fit into this show perfectly. The writers of Arrow could fucking take notes from this show. No, they could. Because Daredevil doesn't have, like, a great... I mean, Daredevil has some memorable villains. I mean, I feel like Kingpin is just universally used. Yeah. He's a Spider-Man villain. He's a... You know, he's all over the board. He's not really just limited to a single character. But he does have, like, Typhoid Mary. You know, I mean, there are villains... But he doesn't have a rogues gallery like Spider-Man or Batman yeah. or The Flash. But pff, the show's going to kick ass. Like I said, I've only seen three out of the 13 episodes. I can't wait to watch the last 10. I'm going to try to watch it two or three I'm going to try to watch the season this week. 
So next week when we meet up, but uh, we could talk more about it. Yeah, I'll try see if I can't watch part one today or episode one. So tell later. Preacher will be coming to AMC. They're still doing that. Oh yeah. Okay. And right now it's looking like Dominic Cooper, better known to us comic book fans as Howard Stark, is going to be Jesse Custer. Really? By the way, Dominic Cooper. If you've never seen The Devil's Double, wow. Like, if you want to see the kind of acting chops this dude has, check out The Devil's Double. Hmm. It's about Saddam Hussein's son and this guy that is picked to be to be his double, hmm. basically. And they give him plastic surgery to make him look like. And Dominic plays, uh, Dominic Cooper plays both roles. He plays the guy that's picked to be his double and Hussein's actual son. It's an insane movie, man, about a guy that's thrust into just a fucking crazy situation um great movie man doubles double i cannot recommend this movie enough Hmm. if you haven't seen it totally worth seeing it he'll make a good jesse custer definitely better than years ago rumored uh oh god i forgot his name now the guy that played cyclops in x-men oh james marston he's gonna be way better than james marston um more comics on tv the w W, uh, I'm sorry, the CWDC continues to expand. Third coming show has a working title of The Atom. Mm. So it looks like Brandon Routh might find more success as The Atom than he did as Superman. Well, do you, as I saw the uh, the, the, the Atom costume mm-hmm. or the image, do you think, because The Atom is similar to Ant-Man, do you think that DC is kind of like just putting The Atom out there because of the Ant-Man stuff and kind of be like, you know what, we're going to get one up on you. Are we going to make this better? Well, the same type of character. Not not characterization, but the same type of character. I could see it you know if I mean? they actually stuck to the core of what the Atom was with the actual miniaturization powers instead of being like, you know... So that's not what it is in... Uh... No, he's like Iron Man, dude. Really? Yeah. What the hell? He's like Iron Man. All right, Seriously, I take, it back. No I take my question like back Iron then. Man. He hasn't got into the... It's just like a super suit, really. Okay. And he flies around. It's actually kind of like... I don't know how it's going to flow to show, but apparently they're going to try it. I've read that the girl that... Uh, I can't remember her name now, but uh, she was the first Canary, okay. moral sister. Yeah. She, apparently that actress has been signed on to be on the show as Canary, so I don't understand how that's going to happen. But then I also heard that among the rumored list of characters on the show, you've got Heat Waves, you've got Captain Cold, you've got Hawk Girl, hmm. and now this is where the reappearance of the dead Lance Canary makes sense. Rip Hunter. Ah. So this this show might deal with time travel and the DC multiverse. Now it's a Supergirl show. Going to be tied into the the Arrow, the CW verse, we'll say. I don't think so because there's Stephen Amell has expressed great interest in trying to get the CW and CBS to come together on doing crossovers and making those shows available to each other. Whether they will come to an agreement or not, and that will actually see for fruition, remains to be seen. Uh, it would be a smart move. I mean, if they don't, the thing CW needs to do is start. Picking up DC shows, just, okay, we're going to do this, 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 before they start getting optioned out by other studios. Yeah. I'm waiting for Stephen Amell to make an appearance at WrestleMania. He's been dying, he's, he's, he's announced he wants to do something. He wants to host Monday Night Raw. We could talk about well, that. Isn't that? On lockup. I could have sworn they said Wednesdays. that. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off like that. Uh, uh, you know, dude, I'm still blaming the alcohol. Let me get, I'm going to wrap this last two points here we're going to make while this is an extra long, almost hour show here so far. Thank you if you're still listening. Uh, AMC announces the new Walking Dead spinoff. Already greenlit for two seasons, which amazes me. Yeah, no shit. Fear the Walking Dead. Kind what? of a weak title. What? We, Seriously? We, we saw some Fear the title. Walking Dead. What the? Come on. Yeah. What is that? If this show is not about something more involved than the current Walking Dead show we have, this show will not make it through the two seasons. It won't. Like, if you're not going to give us a, a different perspective on the zombie apocalypse world of The Walking Dead, like, I understand it looks like the show's going to deal with the outbreak as it happens. Now, if this is from the perspective of, like, the CDC or the government or the military, if it's not something different than a lone group of fucking survivors that don't need, know each other, I'm not really interested in watching it. Because... Do we need two shows that are about the same thing 
just in different locations? Right. No. I agree. And my last little nugget, can Powers, the comic book show, Powers, can the show succeed if it's limited to only being watched by people that have a PlayStation device? Is that a rhetorical question? Absolutely. Um, obviously, if enough people watch it, it's going to be a success. What I think would happen is they're going to really push any way possible for these people that already own PlayStations or have access to the Sony network to go ahead and watch the show. If you're not a fan, watch it, watch it, watch it. And they get a certain number and say, you know what, we reached this number, it's successful, and then they shop it around. I say, look, this is what we reached just on a limited you know, um, outlet. So we want to put it on a grander scale. And I think when that happens, if that happens, then it might have the power to succeed. You, know, you, you can plug in numbers and inflate them, you know, but... Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't have a PlayStation. I, I don't have a PlayStation either. I think it's a bad move to put out a show and expect it to garner any kind of really huge following if the only people that can watch it are, gamers. are people that have the PlayStation Network. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to run out and buy a PlayStation just to watch Powers. I agree. Um, if I, I own, although I own a Sony DVD Blu-ray player. Now, if, oh, so do I. if you Sony watch it there? somehow, this is what I'm saying, if Sony somehow figures out a way to offer up any kind of, you know, cinematic fare that they're going to create. Do you have the one that's got like, it's really small, it's got all those built-in apps, and every time it, um... Yeah, mine's got built-in apps, but it didn't update for WWE Network. Mine did. Yeah, mine didn't. I'm not. I think I have the Sony Network. It kind of pisses I'm not me off. Check. But I mean, if you can't watch it on other devices made by Sony, then I think I, I don't know, man. And I hear the show's pretty good, but is it going to make it? I don't know. So that's a wait and see. Um, that's about all I got, man, for this week. Yeah, it was a lot of talk here. You know, there's a lot of a lot to digest. Yeah. You know, you. Uh, I threw in five words every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> I got to carry this episode. I'm sorry. As you should. This episode, <laughs> thanks to a, As you a hungover junior. You know, as, as always, uh, you got that Barry White voice. Man. You can check out everything we do at uh, comicsremix.com. Which comics I remix. promise I'm in the process of overhauling the website. It's just really, really time consuming. And the fact that the computer I used to do it is like, the, there's next to no memory in there. So it's like it runs really slow, and by the time I get to sit down and be like, all right, I got a few minutes to do this, I end up falling asleep because I get up so damn early for work. But uh, I got to sit down with uh, someone, and I, you know, somebody specific, and they're supposed to walk me through this. So once they walk me through it, because I kind of started tinkering with it a little bit, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure, like, why is this not here? Why, you know, how can I do this? So when I sit down with him, he's going to show me how to do it once I got that. Okay, this is right. why. Or then Once you know how to do little, stuff, your vision yeah, it'll, it'll flow can a become bit. a reality. And then we'll be pimping the new Comics Remix website. But for now, the old one is still up because I still pay my bill every month. And there's the YouTube page. You can always check out our YouTube channel. Yep. And, uh, which years, now has all the past episodes, or as we call them, then issues yeah. of the Spinner Rack. Uh, for your toy review needs, check out Reviews Remixed. Our, no, our no. Boy Alex. I always say it backwards. It's remixed. Re no. remixed yeah, reviews. reviews remixed um, by uh, Alex Martinez for Comics Remixed, where he uh, he reviews some of the latest and greatest action figures. Um, did an excellent review of the Sergeant Slaughter. Did you see the new one that he posted uh, this past weekend, where he reviewed that Disney Store Select Marvel Select uh, Thor figure? I have not seen that one. I'll have to check it out. Dude, okay, do you remember Bowen releasing the Thor statue where he was, had the spinning hammer? Yes. The action figure. Nice. Marvel Select made an action figure where it came with the spinning hammer accessory. Nice. He picked it up and did the review on it. That's cool. I'll so, have to check that out. Yep. Good stuff over there for all you Toys fans. For sure. Uh, check us out at Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Comics Remix. Uh, we be at Spinner Rack. We're also on Instagram. Instagrizzle. Yeah, Alex handles that. Right off. So it's all pictures. Nice. So there you go. Comics Remix at Instagram. Yep. Or whatever it is. I, I don't whatever know. Whatever it is. But uh, yeah, definitely for everything, all your comic needs, check out comicsremix.com. If you need to contact either one, any one of us, it's either Alex, Brian, or Junior at comicsremix.com. Drop us a line. Let us know You know what you think of the show. Always contact us via social media. Right. Let us know. Is there anything you want to hear us talk about on the show? Two weeks away till C2E2. Like I said, if you guys see us, Please stop by and say hello. We'd really, really appreciate it. You know, we're also looking to interview fans. 
So uh, if you want to be on the show briefly and get interviewed by us, just like I said, just walk on over, say hello, and we'll chit-chat. And that'll be it for episode 46 of the Spinner Rack, Breaking the Fourth Wall, presented by Comics Remixed. Uh, join us back here next week for more Breaking the Fourth Wall, and uh, we'll see you Wednesday for the second episode of The Lockup. I like that. I like that. You clap. Like Hell yeah, man. Like they didn't, you guys can't see that, but like he clapped and got into like a fighting position. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's good stuff, man. I should put my glasses back on. Yeah? I think so. Because Junior wears his sunglasses at night. And with that, we're gone. Good night. He's blinded by the light.